Now, please welcome ASMS President, Dr. Kant Lin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome. The world has never been a smaller place than it is right now. If the Ebola crisis taught us anything, it's this. What happens in the most remote corners of the planet will touch us here at home. We don't have the choice to isolate ourselves. But we can choose to see the bigger picture when it comes to global health. We do have the choice not to be myopic. We must embrace opportunities that new connections provide. As global citizens, each of us needs to seek out these new connections. The membership of the ASMS is already finding them. In fact, the bigger picture is part of our history. And this year, our organization continued to bring the world into our view. As doctors, how are we adapting to our smaller world? Richard Horton, editor of The Lancet, writes that it boils down to two simple words, liberty and equity. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Especially here in historic Boston. These are the noble ideas that our founders fought for. They are in your DNA if you were born and raised in this country. They were the fire in the belly of people who fought to get to our shores, as many of our ancestors did. In fact, a commitment to these ideals is universal to all Americans. What are we, as reconstructed plastic sur surgeons, doing to carry the ideas of liberty and equity forward? With the ASMS, it always starts with education. Our pre-conference symposium yesterday educated participants who are volunteering for international mission trips. Next year marks the 40th anniversary of the flagship of our educational programming, the basics course, probably the longest continuing running course in plastic surgery. Paul Farmer, founder of Partners in Health, the international social justice and health organization, and yesterday's keynote speaker reminds us that training missions are critical to global health. Organized societies of surgical specialists like you, the members of ASMS, can bridge the rich-poor divide. We can be adjuncts to universities in creating training opportunities. This past year, our members traveled around the world doing what we do best. Traditionally, promoting liberty and equity through global health has been about public health initiatives, like distributing influenza vaccines or malaria pills. But just as important as Farmer and others, like John Mira, one of our own, have pointed out that global surgery can save and change lives. The sad truth is that access to surgery is difficult, if not impossible, in many parts of the world. Post-trauma reconstruction or a lip and palate repair can mean the difference between eating and speaking properly, getting a job, successful integration into society, or not. Embracing opportunities to share our surgical skills beyond our borders is perhaps the clearest way that we can fulfill our charge to be responsible global citizens. This year, the ASMS began an exciting new initiative to globalize the basic course to Eastern Europe, specifically to Romania. You might not know, but this region's access to surgery lags significantly behind the Western world and is more consistent with the rest of the developing world. 30 Romanian plastic surgery, oral surgery, and otolaryngology residents took part in the course. Despite needing to carry crucial equipment with us in our luggage, Working with unfamiliar lab materials and facing down language barriers, we knew that our inaugural effort had succeeded when the medical university chancellor, Dr. Peeptu, concluded there is nothing basic about this course. The trip included the surgical reconstruction of a patient with an uncorrected nasal orbital ethmoid fracture, which provided a clinical correlate to all of the principles taught in the course. According to Dr. Peeptu, his residents and students learned as much over the time of our visit as they normally would have over an entire year. This will not be a one and done effort, however. We are building a lasting educational infrastructure through a partnership with the medical university that will involve the ASMS for years 
to come. Global education is a personal theme for me. Both of my parents were refugees from China, torn by war in the 1940s. As a young man, my father took up civil engineering because he aspired to help rebuild his country after the war. His career took him and my family to many parts of the developing world. There, he partnered with local engineers to design and build vital highways, ports, dams, and bridges. Growing up with my dad showed me a global model to share expertise internationally and to build lasting local partnerships. Here at home, we face different challenges to advance liberty and equity. The ASMS is just as committed to that task. The US healthcare system is changing rapidly, especially since the passage of the Affordable Care Act. The systems in which we all work are being enlisted to deliver more efficient, safer, and equitable care. Mergers and acquisitions have become the new buzzwords. But new organizations spawn unfamiliar alliances that are difficult to navigate. Efficiency also means a focus on the bottom line. And that threatens traditional models of medical education and resident training. We need to share with each other lessons and strategies about how to navigate our way in this brave new world. This year, we held a leadership summit to address ways to keep plastic surgeons relevant as healthcare evolves. Here are some words of wisdom from our nation's capital. With new government involvement in healthcare, the ASMS's mission of advocacy and our role in the AMA has never been more important. We must continue to educate the public and legislators about how our specialty uniquely equips us to change lives. We are indeed fortunate to have former ASMS president Dr. Victor Lewis as the senior plastic surgery representative at the table to protect our interests, especially in the face of new competition from rival specialties. I could not talk tonight about liberty, equity, and globalization without invoking Thomas Jefferson, our third president, author of the Declaration of Independence, and as I never forget to mention, in Charlottesville, where I've lived for the past 24 years, founder of the University of Virginia. Jefferson was also a citizen of the world and a philosopher of globalization. In his typical eloquence, he gives us touchstones for the ASMS and the missions that we carry forward. We should all be proud that our society has been and will continue to be committed to global outreach. We will continue to seek and create new opportunities to educate, advocate, and care for the needy, both at home and abroad. I urge you all to join us, if you haven't already done so, to help spread light across the world, and in Jefferson's words, without confinement or exclusive appropriation. Embrace the bigger picture and make that commitment as our forefathers did two centuries ago to advance liberty and equity. The work this year would not have been possible without the tireless efforts of our board, a truly remarkable collection of talented people. I would like to thank each of you for serving your society so well this year. I would like to thank our corporate sponsors and the Rotary Club. Without their generous financial support, none of our missions would have been possible. On a personal note, I would like to thank my mentors and teachers who have guided me throughout my career, most notably Lytton Whitaker, Henry Kawamoto, Scott Bartlett, Joe Gruss, and Mark Costanchin. A special note of appreciation and affection goes to my longtime neurosurgery colleague and friend, John Jane Sr., who passed away last month. Last but not least, I would like to thank my wife, Lynn, who has been my greatest support and truly is my better half. My two daughters, Samantha and Carly, and my mom, Joanne. Would you please stand? You have been the joys of my life, and I love you all. It has truly been an honor and a privilege to have served. Thank you very much.